that's going on, uh, the right gangs, uh, and you see the worst case scenario is going to occur back behind this essentially. Do we know if this is premeditated at all? Did they come here looking for a fight? There's certainly that possibility. Um, part of our intel is that people were coming here to start trouble. Part of it was that they were coming here to try to recruit other members into their gang to increase their numbers. And uh, we will get to the bottom of what started it and why they were here. Um, and that's just part of the investigation. And it'll, it'll take a while to sort through all of that. Uh, again, I will say kudos to the officers that were here on scene that stopped this from getting any worse. And to our uh, gang intel detective that had been working his tail off to get information to us. He was here as well and was able to provide us this information. Had he have not done his job and sorted that out, shared information, had other agencies not shared information with us, we may not have been here today and you're 100 yards away from, from lots of public activity and it could have gone wrong very quickly. And that group that was here, the Waco's Tactical Defense Team, we're lucky that those ones. Huh? Yeah, you know, the officers that are here today happen to be our SWAT team. Uh, I will tell you that Waco PD, uh, the local agencies around here, we got good cops in and around this area. Um, the officers that were here on scene today happen to be our tactical guys. We got good Waco officers, but these are the best of the best. They were here with the heavy uh, vest, heavy armament. They were able to very quickly go in. Those guys trained uh, weekly, if not every other week. Uh, DPS was here with us as well. Those individuals are well trained. This turned to an active shooter scenario in the blink of an eye. And what those officers did today was instrumental in saving citizens' lives. Yeah, so it was quite amazing. Yeah. Um, now, do we have any update on the people, the injured right now? Uh, I know at this point that uh, the numbers are still holding at nine fatalities and 18 that were injured and taken to the hospital two of those 18 had to be transferred because of their injuries um we'll just see uh the doctor with the baylor scott and white called me earlier and told me that the individuals that were there that were brought into the hospital many of them suffered from not only gunshot but stab wounds um, some of them were just stab wounds some of them were gunshot wounds in uh, just a variety of pretty serious injuries that occurred today. And I know you said you've already recovered over 50 weapons. Yeah. yeah. Officers here on scene are still recovering, processing evidence. Uh, I asked earlier how many weapons we've recovered, and we've recovered everything from brass knuckles to chains to clubs to knives to uh, all this stuff fire. On them. Absolutely. And so therein lies the question, why would you come to a restaurant and carry that stuff normally? You don't. They came looking for trouble and they found it. Um, we were fortunate enough to get it stopped before it spilled out into the community. And really quickly before we go, what is Twin Peaks' role in all of this? We'll see. Um, you know, that, that left is left to be seen. Um, we will certainly have some discussion with them. Uh, I said before what occurred with them, they were aware. Um, we were working with National as, as recently as the past week and a half. And, uh, We'll have to let them answer for that and see what their thought process is. Okay, thank you so much, Sergeant Swan. We really appreciate it. Back to you, Doug and Nikki. All right, Russell Shaw just spoke with uh, Waco Police Sergeant Patrick Swanton, who's been briefing us on the situation, the deadly shooting at Twin Peaks that happened earlier this afternoon. Uh, shedding a little bit more light, we found that out that these individuals were carrying guns, knives, Chain. chains, brass knuckles on them. Some of the injuries, they had gunshot wounds and stab wounds. Some had both gunshot wounds and, and stab wounds. And she asked him, he said they were coming, they were looking for trouble. Yeah, you know, and that stuff's premeditated. You don't come to a restaurant with that kind of material. And I think she asked a very good question that we've been hitting on all day is what is Twin Peaks' role in this? They were approached by the cops and police. Mm -hmm. They said, we need your help. We want to defuse the situation and they wouldn't cooperate. Mm -hmm. They even went to the national level. So uh, I know that uh, that's the big question right now. What were police asking them to do or not to do? And why did they not want to cooperate? So uh, that's something that we probably won't know the answer to right away. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a lot of questions unanswered for quite some time because we've been told numerous times this investigation is going to take a very long time. And um, 
the, the deceased are still on scene right now. So they're still working what they describe as this very gruesome crime scene. And we want to reiterate that there is only one crime scene out there. Uh, there is some more police activity going on down in downtown Waco. Uh, nothing to really be alarmed of, mm -hmm. but people are being detained in uh, flex cups and uh, trash bags full of stuff being carried in with them. Uh, but there's nothing to show that there's suspects that are being questioned. We're not sure of that. That has not yet been confirmed. But um, there is some police activity. Some roads are closed downtown. So if you have to go out tonight, uh, please reconsider. Um, so. Well, to the Walmart on Franklin is closed yes. too. Uh, of course, all the businesses at Central Texas Marketplace, the Sonic across the street, uh, that business is closed as well. So. Uh, we've had three press briefings with Waco police on this situation. As soon as there is another one, we'll pass that information along to you. But we're going to continue to follow the story. We're going to send you back to regular scheduled programming uh, at this time. But you can follow us online for the latest updates. That address is kcentv.com. For Nikki Lorenzo, I'm Jim Curran. Have a good night.